Okay. Okay. So yeah. welcome everyone to this third day of the workshop in session three. Uh, the talk now will be given by Matthias Staubacher, who will be telling us about a deformed, integrable, non-diagonalizable spin chain from QFT. Matthias, please go ahead. Yeah. Anyway, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this uh, beautiful island of Jeju. And um, I'm actually here. And I actually see uh, our, our Korean organizers. Uh, uh, so um, Robert cannot be here, unfortunately, but um, um, I, I see them. And I, I see some, some young people um, participating in the workshop. Um, so I hope everyone can, uh, from the, the, the few people from outside, that they can hear me well and see my slide. If there's any problem, please, uh, please somehow let the organizers know. Uh, if there's any problem with the sound that is, or or, or 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 the quality of the slides and so on. Okay, so it's a pleasure to give a talk here. Um, and as you can see um, in my title, some of the buzzwords of this workshops uh, are mentioned. Uh, it's a workshop on exact results on irrelevant deformations of QFTs. And certainly I will talk about uh, QFTs. I will talk about this exact results and I will talk about uh, deformations. The only thing that doesn't quite fit is that I will talk about some very relevant deformations as we'll see. Okay, so this is based on some earlier work with um, uh, my then postdoc Asker Ibsen and my then student uh, Leo Zipilius, uh, the one loop spectral problem of strongly twisted n equals four super young mills. Um, and uh, then actually um, we, we worked uh, that, that kind of setup where we noticed that there was this uh, really interesting problem, but uh, couldn't see so much uh, how to solve it. And then uh, uh, I joined forces, uh, forces with Chang Gim An, who is one of the organizers. Um, on my recent visit to, to Eva University, Women's University, and we, we worked, um, we wrote a paper, the integrable hyper eclectic spin chain. And there's an eclectic and a hyper eclectic one, as you'll see, these are funny names, I'll explain them. Um, and um, and then, then actually even there also, we didn't solve it, the problem. And now we made some real progress. Uh, um, also my new student, Luke Corcoran, um, who was supposed to come to Jeju, but because of his quarantine rules couldn't come. So he's uh, still in Berlin. Berlin. Um, uh, yeah, we, we basically um, more or less now made some, I mean, we made some real progress and you will hear today about this. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, some motivations. The disclaimer I already more or less made in, in my introduction. Uh, um, so there has been some recent interest in a certain deformation of planar n equals four super young mills theory, the so-called strong twisting limits. And uh, uh, one of these limits, we'll discuss them in a second, is the so-called fishnet uh, quantum field theory, which you must have heard about. Um, now this deformation, as I already said, is actually very relevant. It's, uh, it leads um, to a rather um, different uh, physics as uh, compared to uh, the original n equals four. And in particular, what leads to is a non-unitary, that's kind of the problem here. Uh, but then the good thing is it leads to a logarithmic conformal quantum field theory and it preserves integrability. Now, actually this model was, um, um, was proposed, uh, this deformation was proposed as a kind of simplification of n equals four. And certainly, as you'll see in a second, in terms of like the Lagrangian and so on, it is a huge simplification. But um, uh, since you make the strong deformation, you actually pay a price. And uh, uh, in general, what, so what you get is a logarithmic conformal field theory. And these uh, are known to be quite subtle. Uh, there's a lot of experience with them in two dimensions. So um, it's not um, that suddenly everything becomes a piece of cake. So many problems are solved or disappear, but some new problems uh, uh, appear and we'll discuss this a bit today. So anyway, we looked uh, into this in the, for, for the moment in the simplest possible setting and there will not be so much field theory today. Uh, um, just I'll give you the background, but um, um, the, the relation to a field theory is that uh, one looks at the one loop dilatation operator, the thing that led to the great successes in n is four. Um, and uh, uh, we found uh, uh, that some, some really curi curious new features arise, which we haven't seen before in, 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 in 
any eagle four and any other modifications in terms of dimension uh, and so on that have been made. So in fact, uh, uh, what we'll see is, and that was always true for n equals four, when you sort of look at this uh, integrable structure you observe, uh, you get some very interesting systems, which uh, in some cases are the simplest uh, things known for a long time in condensed matter, such as uh, the Heisenberg magnet, but there's also new things uh, uh, that happen, models uh, people haven't uh, seen before or haven't studied before. Uh, so in, in that sense, all these uh, string gauge integrable models are a great source of, uh, of novel kind of integrable systems uh, that, that uh, many of which I believe should be important in, in condensed matter theory in the future. And uh, so, and this is a, another example today, we'll find a new kind of spin chain, uh, which, um, uh, which has uh, fascinating properties. Anyway, so the background is a strongly twisted N equals four super young Mills theory. What is it? You start from planar integrable three parameter gamma deform N equals four. Uh, so um, yeah, unfortunately I lack the time to, to discuss uh, about this gamma deformation on the string side. This is, uh, um, uh, so basically you, you kind of twist the three Cartan uh, charges of CSO6 uh, uh, with some ang angles gamma one, gamma two, gamma three. Uh, and that on the string side leads to so-called so lunin maldacena backgrounds. And uh, you still have a integrable a sigma model and um, you get uh, a certain deformed uh, a, a gauge theory. Um, it's still an ordinary quantum field theory. Um, you could also uh, deform the uh, uh, Cartan generators of the uh, so 2,4 part, but then you get some non-commutative gauge series. Anyway, uh, and now the, the new idea from a, back a few years ago was, uh, well now I guess six years, uh, is to perform a double scaling limit on these gamma deformations, uh, uh, where you, I said you have the three Cartan charges of SO6. So the gammas, are, you have e to the i gamma one, e to the i gamma two, e to the i gamma three, um, and, um, and then what you do is actually you make this gamma imaginary. Uh, so you, you move away from the unit circle for the three uh, parameters QJ. Um, by the way, can people see the mouse here? If I use the mouse. So there's these QJs. Actually, the, the correct definition is e to the minus i gamma j over two. There's a by convention some factor one half here. Um, so, and then, so the, you, usually this is, of course, on the unit circle in the complex plane. But when you make the gammas complex, you can, you get a general complex number. And uh, in particular, you could move this uh, three twist parameter either to infinity or to zero. Uh, now, uh, that uh, leads, of course, to some divergent weights in the Lagrangian. So you should compensate by taking uh, this, uh, Toft coupling, which by itself, of course, uh, is already a scaled uh, quantity. We are talking about planar theories, large n limit, but you you you, you take this uh, um, basically this Toft coupling in this convention of little g uh, to zero, and then depending on whether you go to infinity or zero, you keep either g times qj or g times qj to the minus one fixed. Now, uh, since there are three, see, three of these parameters, this uh, leads to a priori two to the three equals eight different strong coupling, strong twisting limits. Now, if you express these QJs uh, as this finite par with some new finite parameters, psi j plus minus, uh, and um, basically um, uh, um, you implement the, uh, taking things to zero infinity by actually either multiplying with a one over epsilon if you want to go to infinity or an epsilon if you want to go to zero, and you replace this uh, uh, redefined toft, toft coupling by epsilon g. And then, then when you take epsilon to zero, you, you, you come to this double scaling limit. So it's a double scaling limit because you mess with the toft coupling and you mess with this um, uh, um, QJs, but in some sense, it's actually a quadruple, quadruple uh, uh, a double scaling limit, right? Because you have you scale three of these parameters plus the top coupling. Yeah. So um, and anyway, uh, so for example, if you take all of them to to infinity, uh, then you what happens is uh, 
uh, a, a drastic uh, um, you get a drastic simplification of the Lagrangian of n equals four, uh, and in particular the gauge fields decouple, um, in the sense that uh, there's no interaction any any uh, anymore, um, and um, and actually um, out of the scalars basically you know there's this kind of six contributions in the uh, uh, commutator phi squared potential. Um, of the three complex scalars. Uh, so out of these six terms in this committed uh, squared terms, you, 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 you keep three of them. And, uh, and then in terms of Feynman diagrams, you see that these uh, are so-called chiral vertices. So, so you get, for example, phi one decker phi two decker phi one phi two, but you're missing phi one decker phi two decker phi two phi one. Yeah, and then there's also some fermions, uh, which I don't talk about today. Um, um, now, one important thing is that these uh, fields, when you say decouple, they decouple, as I said, in sense of interactions. But if you look at some local uh, composite operators, and um, uh, and they contain like gauge fields uh, beforehand, uh, then of course the gauge field doesn't completely decouple. It still sits there as a kind of a wall inside this uh, inside this uh, composite operator, and this kind of wall walls will play a big role today. Yeah, so what are the other seven cases? So, for example, if you take them all to zero, then it actually essentially, while this is kind of the chiral model, you get the anti chiral model. Uh, so, you can see just now you get the other terms uh, here, uh, as I said, uh, with a phi 2 phi 1 here. Um, and, um, and that is, of course, uh, essentially the uh, equivalent. But what's kind of interesting is um, mm, if you look at the other six uh, limits, um, you um, you get a mixture of right movers and left movers from this chirality point of view, uh, and also the fermions uh, 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 structure is different. So, for example, here the, the fourth fermion of the SU4 R invariant fermions uh, also decouples, uh, but here the fourth fermion in these other six limits don't, doesn't decouple. So these six limits are actually, from this point of view, different. Yeah, and actually, the, the, in terms of the spin chains I will talk about, there's also some very interesting spin chains in those. In those, uh, they, they are all again equivalent uh, up to permutations, um, and these other. So, so there are some very interesting um, spin chains uh, of a more complicated type than I will talk about today, which have also not been solved. Yeah. So anyway, uh, now let's go and look at the uh, the usual one loop dilatation operator, which uh, has been known uh, for a long time now to be described by an Hamiltonian, which in the simplest case of two scalars, uh, of the scalars would be a Heisenberg spin chain. Um, so, um, so basically, how does it look now uh, in this uh, limit? So if you take, for example, the plus, 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 uh, and um, so now I look at uh, in term composite operators of just the fields containing phi one, phi two, phi three, which I just call one, two, three. And I don't insert the, their daggers. So these are, I only look at local chiral composite operators. So one, one here means like phi one, phi one, uh, and so on. Uh, and now what you see here in this limit, what actually happens is um, it's quite different from, from Heisenberg. Uh, if you have two adjacent ones, well, that would also be the, the, the case for Heisenberg, you, you, you get zero. But you, you cannot exchange a one and a two if they are ordered in this way, or a two and a three, or a three and a one. But you can only exchange a two and a one, or a three and a two, or a one and a three. So the Heisenberg model would be the one where you have uh, also these one, not where the, all these sizes are one. Uh, essentially, um, uh, the one where you, these are one, and, and here you also have a one, a one, and a one. Um, yeah, and then you can do something even more extreme. Uh, you can still set now uh, two further parameters of this channel. So this is what we call the eclectic spin chain, and you can uh, you can do something more even more drastic. You can set two further parameters to zero, and then you come to what we call the hyper eclectic spin chain. So that's even simpler. So basically, any any pairs of fields uh, uh, get mapped to zero. Except if there's a two to the left of a one, then it's turned into one on the, uh, a one two. So could there be a simpler Hamiltonian? So this is like a bit like a Heisenberg chain, chain where you uh, 
exchange uh, adjacent uh, degrees of freedom. It's clearly, clearly a three state model. Um, but the only thing you're allowed to exchange if a fi field phi two is to the left of a field phi one, then you can exchange, nothing else. So that means the phi twos are kind of moving in one direction in the background of the ones, or from a dual point of view, the ones are moving in the other direction in the background of the twos. And the threes are exactly like walls. They are not doing anything, but they don't really decouple because we leave them inside the composite operators. So they're like non-propagating fields, chopping up the composite operator sitting there at fixed walls. So what we are getting is uh, something like, a, uh, if you call like the one a background uh, field, like a vacuum field, uh, then the twos are all chirally moving in one direction. Until when? Well, until they hit the wall. Ping. And then you get zero. So that's a kind of a funny game. And amazingly, uh, as I'll show you today, this is an integrable model still. Uh, but actually, the standard quantum inverse scattering method fails for the, roughly speaking, for the reasons that you cannot build scattering states. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, and then actually, uh, what is another interesting thing, I guess, from a sort of a condensed meta point of view, this model, this hyper eclectic model, is clearly looks much simpler even then this eclectic model with the three parameters. But actually, as we'll see in, and I even haven't ex even explained what spectrum means here. It's not the ordinary spectrum because these are not diagonalizable, but there is such a thing as a spectrum. And this spectrum is actually amazingly, if you pick your generic parameters for complex values for Psi one, Psi two, Psi three, um, uh, you get a certain spectrum. Um, and that is actually only a part of the spectrum of this model where you fine tune things such that Xi1 and Xi2 are, 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 are turned to zero and you just keep Xi3. So you can then, then clearly set it to one. Uh, yeah, so, so the model where two of these parameters are set to zero is kind of fine tuned and actually has a, has a richer spectrum as this generic model. Uh, rather, and of course we know uh, examples of this that a sort of a, <laughs> a more complicated Lagrangian is simpler than a, sometimes, you know, like phi to the four theory is extremely simple in terms of the Lagrangian, but much more complicated than in, in many ways than, for example, n equals four. Okay, so anyway, let's quickly discuss the integrability. Uh, so the R matrix of this eclectic model with a three parameter, if uh, now if you know your if you know your R matrices, you see that uh, it, it's very similar. To Heisenberg, except that a few terms on the the off diagonal elements plus these three, the ones here correspond to the permutation operator, and then in the in the usual uh, Heisenberg type is actually a, a three state generalization of Heisenberg, as uh, basically something uh, some something proportional to the spectral parameter u on every entry of the diagonal. But here some entries are zero. Here you have a zero. Here you have a zero. Here you have a zero. But that doesn't matter. Um, this still satisfies the young baxter equation. Now, since this just for arbitrary xi satisfy young baxter you can even set now xi1 and xi2 to 0 and xi3 to 1. Uh, uh, and, then, and then you come to this R matrix of this uh, uh, hyper eclectic model, right? Uh, where basically it's a permutation operator uh, uh, with a single modification, namely on, on some particular spot. In the, on the diagonal in this tensor product space of three times three particles, we have a spectral single uh, copy of the spectral parameter sitting. Okay. Now, what do we do with this model? So let's let, let's go back to the model of the three parameters for the moment. Um, but the, the construction is the same in the eclectic or hyper eclectic. And in fact, the construction now, uh, if you want to start your, your integrability machinery, is the same as you would always do. You build a monodromy uh, by stringing up. Uh, these R matrices I just introduced. Uh, you, you take one of the in the tensor product of three times three. You, you look at one of the threes as a as a fundamental representation of uh, something like SU three. Uh, even though here we don't have an SU three, um, uh, and then you make a matrix multiplication in the three-dimensional auxiliary space, uh, and the rest of these, these other tensor three, tensor three, tensor three, basically uh, builds up the quantum space of the spin chain. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. What is the symmetry of R matrix you show? Um, so that's a good question. I don't know. It's not. Uh, yeah. It's not uh, certainly not SU three invariant, uh, and it's also not a usual uh, 
um, uh, SU3Q or something. I, I actually don't know. I mean, so generally, if you twist these models, this is called a, a, a Drinfeld uh, twist. Uh, uh, and, you, you, uh, and so in, in, that, in some sense, this is a complexified uh, uh, Drinfeld twist of SU3, ordinary SU3, complexified Drinfeld twist, where, uh, some of the, where all of the twist parameters uh, either go to zero or to infinity. And a subtlety is here to get, actually get a finite R matrix you should again, then you should also take the spectral, original spectral parameter to zero. Yeah. So the, the short answer is it's, uh, it's a, 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 a triple scale or quadru quadruple scaling limit of uh, a certain complexified twin field test of, uh, uh, of, SU, of the SU3 uh, R matrix, if that helps, but I, it doesn't help me to, to say these words. Anyway, uh, now the machinery is the same. Uh, you, as usual, you, you build a transfer matrix, uh, the trace of auxiliary space, the three-dimensional auxiliary space. Uh, you show that there's a special point uh, uh, in this dimensions here of this R matrix at speckle par parameter <coughs> zero. You can show uh, that you get uh, uh, just the um, translation operator by one lattice unit. Which is of course clear because then you know, as always, when you take set u to zero, I told I, then you get just the permutation operator, and that of course leads to the ordinary shift operator. Uh, and then the Hamiltonian uh, you extract by taking the first logarithmic derivative uh, essentially um, uh, uh, at uh, at this point u equals zero of the transfer matrix, and that leads to this nearest neighbor Hamiltonian. Um, uh, of the spin chain, um, yeah. So basically, this is of course uh, just the these are just the Hamilton densities, right? I mean, the, the whole Hamilton is the sum now over nearest neighbor pairs uh, of, of, of these uh, adjacent uh, actions here <coughs> on two adjacent sides. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, and now, uh, because you have Young Baxter, as always, you show that the transfer matrix at spectral parameter u commutes with the transfer matrix at spectral parameter u prime. And the Hamiltonian is one of these commuting charges. Uh, so it also commutes with the transfer matrix. So by the usual definition of Young-Baxter integrability, this is an integrable spin chain. If we, if we take this as a definition of integrability. There's of course many, but okay. Um, now, but, but now comes the problems. So this is a, you, you proceed with the standard formal lesson, but now, uh, you know, for Hermitian Hamiltonians, of course, there should be three to the L states for a, a spin chain of length L, it's a three state model. Uh, and uh, they should be, there should be linearly, that many linearly independent eigenstates, uh, uh, which satisfy if you, if you now take the L's root of unity here, you call them omega L. The following, um, uh, so uh, since the shift operator commutes with the Hamiltonian, uh, the eigenstates of Hamilton all have a, a fixed uh, eigenvalue omega L to the, some, some uh, mode number K, KJ. Uh, so where KJ runs from zero to L minus one. Uh, so basically all the eigenstates have to be, of course, eigenstates of this shift operator. Uh, but uh, um, this, this is highly degenerate here. Uh, uh, the degeneracy then is lifted in general by, by, by acting uh, by finding the eigenstates of H. And, and in fact, uh, so one of the useful things about this Drinfeld type, type twist is actually that uh, if you do the beta undots, um, uh, you, you don't have this problem with the degeneracies caused by the SU3. So this is actually a good thing. And then you really get uh, the full set of three to the L um, eigenstates. Uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. You're not doing beta undots yet. It's just discussing the diagonalization. Now the point is this eclectic model and certainly also the hyper eclectic model. Um, this is not a Herm Hermitian Hamiltonian, and uh, uh, and actually one, one can quickly see uh, that 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 this uh, Hamiltonian really cannot be diagnosed. Of course, it could be. The statement says that if it's Hermitian, it can be diagonalized. The converse is not true. Um, even if it's non-Hermitian, some some Hamilton could might still be fully or partially diagonalizable. Um, that's not basically the case here. Uh, this is not 
just really not diagonalizable. And what you should do is you should look at the generalized uh, eigen uh, uh, states with generalized eigenvalues. So if you take a generalized eigenvalue and look at the quantum quantity H minus this uh, energy eigenvalue, then only a certain power of it on, on Psi is zero. In other words, um, uh, you have some kind of nil potency structure here at the Hamiltonian. Yeah? Um, and um, the Hamiltonian is still block diagonal with respect to sectors of uh, 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 a fixed uh, number of phi one fields and phi two fields and phi three fields. So just for reference for the few, for, from now on in the talk, I, I say if the length of the spin chain L is, uh, uh, is L, then I say that M is the number of excitations so the number of fields two and three. So um, L minus M uh, is send the number of fields phi one. And then I have a third number K, which is counting the number of threes. So then M minus K is the number of, of fields phi two and K is the number of phi threes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, and uh, of course, uh, also these generalized eigen uh, states can still be chosen to be eigenstates of the, uh, of the shift operator because it's mutes. Now, there, uh, this is the last thing time I will talk about field theory and then go to the spin chains. And the field theory side, uh, the Jordan blocks actually in the spectrum, uh, um, so this uh, generalized eigenvalue structure lead to actually something very interesting. It leads to logarithms and the correlation functions. Uh, so, for example, Mm, if you have, uh, have an example, two local composite operators, and you look at the mixing, then then you can show that um, this non-diagonalizability and the generalized eigenvalue structure leads to this kind of structure. You have, uh, uh, in the simplest case, uh, delta one zero delta, uh, which cannot be diagonalized. So so delta is is an eigenvalue here, but it cannot be fully diagonalized. As, as we all know from linear algebra, this matrix, right? Uh, and in, and then in, indeed, and the, the dilatation operator minus delta times unity is a matrix zero one zero zero, which is the simplest case of this, such a Jordan matrix. Uh, it's just not a diagonalizable matrix. And then the interesting thing is, then you can show in field theory what it means is that actually the usual one over x to the two delta um, uh, scaling law. Um, uh, is modified to, uh, with uh, uh, with some lo logs of the distance squared. So one can show <clears throat> that this uh, kind of non-diagonalizability uh, leads to logarithmic correlation functions. So that's why it's called logarithmic uh, control field theory, um, and that is uh, looks like a nuisance, but it can actually be quite interesting. And in fact, in two dimensions, uh, these logarithmic conformal field theories have been a major topic in mathematical physics uh, in, in recent years. Uh, there's a lot of research on them, uh, and uh, because they are mathematically actually more subtle often than ordinary CFT2s. Uh, 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 but in two dimension, at least, they are very, very interesting because uh, they lead to, uh, they have important applications to statistical mechanics. Uh, 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 systems such as polymers. And in fact, there are this non-unitarity, which is intimately tied to this uh, logarithmicity uh, of the model is actually not a problem, but something beneficial because certain systems uh, uh, have not clear power-like scaling, but uh, there's uh, scaling violations with logarithm and still they are conform. Okay, uh, so now, of course, what I'm doing here is something four-dimensional and uh, uh, then, of course, uh, you don't, we don't have this connection to the stat mech, but uh, there might be other interesting applications. Uh, um, so that I, I feel there is a certain interest in, in logarithmic conformal feature in dimension other than two. Okay, now, if you, if you just uh, switch off this third field, you only have five ones and five twos. That's actually basically the, fish, uh, the fishnet model. Uh, where you um, only look at, look at two scalar fields. Um, uh, the, then actually, that's a bit um, atypical here because a non-Hermitian uh, Hamilton is actually diagonalizable still, even so it's not, not, it's not Hermitian, but it is diagonalizable. Uh, and you can do a, a solve the model by various techniques, either beta under or jordan Wigner. You find uh, the energy is a sum over one over beta roots. Uh, beta roots basically uh, satisfy three equations. Uh, 
it's of course just a, it's an XY model, which is chiral. So it's just basically the same tricks as for the ordinary XY models work. Um, and um, yeah, so basically um, these are the beta equations, just uh, quantization on a ring. Uh, completeness is shown as easily as for the ordinary XY model. So, so nothing to be done here. Um, you get complex energies, but it's completely diagonalizable. But what happens for KGS1? Now we, now we put in these walls. And the interest, so basically the reason that the, the two-state model is still diagonalizable is that, that you have only like right movers, but they can still sort of swirl, swirl around the ring without problem. So you can, you can build sort of freeze, free, pro, freely propagating states. And there's no, essentially no scatter. I mean, scattering, this S matrix is minus one is a kind of a fermionic system, as we know, uh, X, Y model. So, so you get this freely propagating parting in one direction. Uh, uh, so even though it's not a mission, it's diagnosed. But then you put the three fields, these things can run against these walls. And, 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 and then when you, you cannot build scattering states anymore. So what you can do is, however, by general theorems of linear algebra, you, um, you, uh, you can bring the Hamiltonian in so-called Jordan normal form. Now, the first thing you notice, and that's really special to this uh, particular eclectic and hyper eclectic models. I told you there's other Jordan normal form type operators where it's not like that. But in this case, the energy you can easily prove is always zero. I mean, the, the, uh, the generalized eigenvalues are always zero. Um, that uh, simply leads, uh, the, the reason basically is that the Hamiltonian itself is basically nil potent. It shifts the particle in, into one direction, all of them. And then at some point you will have shifted them all to some ball uh, and you get zero. Uh, and then there's more complicated ways to get zero, but you always get zero in the end. Okay, so now uh, let's look at the usual L by L Jordan blocks. Uh, the matrix is zero everywhere, uh, except for the first off diagonal by convention, either up or down. The diagonal, you have a string of ones, either up or down. In my convention here, so they're up. Um, and then that, that's a Jordan block. And then the, the general theorem says that uh, uh, if all the general eigen, uh, general eigenvalues are zero, which is the case here, you can make it find a similarity transform that basically uh, brings the full Hamiltonian into uh, um, B, L, um, B blocks of sizes L1, L2, L3, and so on up to LB. Yeah? Uh, so the notation here is this L1 is a block of size L1, then a block of size L2, and so on. And, uh, and here, block of size L there. Here we have P such blocks. A short notation for this would be something like L1, L2 up to LB. And of course, the sizes of all these Jordan blocks have to add up almost to three to the L, but we have to take out the fields, uh, the, the cases where there's no field three. So you should subtract minus two to the L because this is a kind of this very small diagonalizable sector. Okay, now let's do an example. Very, so very simple example. <laughs> Simplest case here, length three, M equals two K equals one. So it means we have one three field, one two field, one one field. And then first of all, let's make cyclic, let's only look at the cyclic sectors. Um, then out of the six possible states, uh, on, uh, there are six permutations of three fields. Um, uh, uh, so uh, there's three cyclicity classes. So let's only look at the cyclic class. And then there's only two states. Uh, and you should form this this is cyclic, a cyclic state, one, two, three, plus cyclically shifted by one unit, plus cyclically shifted by another. And there's also two, one, three, plus cyclically shifted, plus cyclically shifted. So, so these are the only two cyclic states. And if you if he just uh, abbreviates this uh, as one, two, three, cyclic C, and two, one, three, cyclic, you see now when the Hamiltonian acts on the sky, it finds a one, two, which it, uh, it basically uh, or if it uh, sorry if it acts on the right guy here on the two one three it finds a two one here which it can make into a one two and then it cannot do anything anymore right because there's a one two a two three and we have periodic boundary conditions a three one so then you get mapped to zero so here you immediately get, get the Jordan normal form zero one zero zero okay so then it looks like this is fairly trivial uh, and it stays trivial as long as you look at uh, uh, two excitations, one excitation three, one excitation two. 
So for example, let's look at channel L now. Then you should start with a state where the two is the furthest possible uh, to the left of the three field, because then when you step, you can, you can step, exchange the first to one pair into a one, two, then you can step again. So you get one, one, two, and so on, until you step all the way down, all ones, then a two and a three. So clearly we get a single Jordan block of size L minus one. Now it looks like, okay, what is this guy wasting our time with? This looks totally trivial, uh, but uh, as we'll see in a second, things become much more intricate for higher values of, uh, of M and K. Um, so more fields too, and more, more, more right movers two and more walls three. Um, <clears throat> so for example, if you look already at M equals three, and now we have, uh, background of arbitrarily many one fields, uh, then uh, two moving fields and a single single wall, um, you already get something more complicated. Yeah. So here you scale up the lengths and there's a difference between odd and even lengths. Um, <clears throat> we are only looking at the cyclic sector and you see um, that now, for example, length nine, you get the Jordan block decomposition block thir size 13, size nine, size five, size size one of course it's easy to guess but not so easy to prove if you if you don't know how to do this yeah so we had this of course seen this uh two years ago we, we found this pattern but uh first we didn't quite know how to prove it now we know okay now you see um still looking at uh at uh, kx1 uh and um m equals four um uh, it, uh, it already gets much more complicated. Uh, you, if you stare at this, uh, you first don't see anything. And then if you st stare very long, you find certain recursive pattern here. Uh, so we, we ran some, some MATLAB code and, and guessed this two years ago, uh, we found this. And it gets more and more complicated. Now we do M equals five, K equals one. And you find, you see this is sort of not a linear recursion at all. Uh, I, you know, this is actually Changram guessed this. I could not guess such things, but he can. So, uh, yeah. So basically, um, and then we looked a bit at the larger values of K, and then we couldn't see any anything anymore. So how do you deal with this? Can can you now use the integrability to solve this problem? Of uh, so so we don't have a spectral problem in the sense of diagonalizing some Hamiltonian, but now we have to look for a this intricate spectrum of Jordan blocks. Okay, um, so, uh, and so I already said, uh, it gets complicated for K, even more complicated for K larger than two. And uh, of course, the first one we'd like to try is the PTM dots. And I'll show you now very quickly that this doesn't work. And then the actual recent progress came through a different way. We used some uh, combinatorics and logic from linear algebra to, to basically figure out the structure. And I think we basically have the solution even though some proofs are still missing. Anyway, why does the beta and that's not work here? Well, I'll keep it very brief now. Uh, so basically, uh, actually, the scaling procedure goes through. So you, you, you can implement on the level of the beta equation this, uh, 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 this uh, double scaling or quadruple scaling in general procedure. Uh, you find the usual looking expression for, for the energy and the beta equations kind of, uh, um, uh, survive in this limit uh, uh, and you can analyze them and then you find some some very interesting uh, when you so so this is actually here mm. yeah so basically uh, you have to what, what you have to do is you uh, if you work immediately with the uh, eclectic or hyper eclectic model you, you cannot do anything because certain to the expert certain and certain commutation relations uh, uh, from the young box equation are simply missing you cannot do it but what you can do is you can work just can just before taking the double scaling limit look at the beta equation and then understand the scaling and then you find uh, uh, that the beta roots scale in very very subtle ways uh, 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 with some fractional powers which we figured out uh, so there is a kind of a the beta equations have a very non-trivial scaling limit as well but very vexingly and, and frustratingly, all the, the, the states from the algebraic beta and that's collapse basically to the state, uh, what I called, um, what we call locked states, basically where uh, 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 Hamiltonian immediately gives zero. 
Yeah, so the state where nothing can move first a string of one particles and a string of two particles and a string of three. Hamilton and his trivial theory on this. Uh, and uh, and uh, even despite much work, uh, we couldn't see uh, how to find the Stroud normal form from this uh, from these beta states. So we abandoned this and uh, developed uh, some other method. So I'll, I'll, I'll very quickly run through this in some example. L equal, which was important for us, L equals seven, M equals three, K equals one. So then you can in, evenly count. So the states look like, like that. It's a length seven spin chain. You have four ones, two twos, and one three. We consider the ones as being a spectator fields, background fields. The twos are moving, the three is a wall. Now you, you can very quickly compute that there must be 15 states in the cyclic sector. So we again start with this kind of uh, as we've done before for a single particle. We start uh, with this configuration where the twos are maximum distance away from the three. And then we start acting. And then you see you just ladder down as before. You, you act once, and then you get a two, one, two. Next time you act, and that's why it's getting complicated, this particle two can again move one unit to the right. But now also this particle can start moving. So you get start getting a linear combination of these two states. You go down, then at some point you even become three states, get three states like that. And then as you proceed with acting with H, again, there's less states, there's funny numbers in front of them, until you come uh, to the state where basically nothing can move anymore and the Hamiltonian kills it. Yeah. So the notation is we call this like the anti locked state, uh, state where you can move, go as far, the, the maximum distance sort of, uh, you can act in the maximum number of times to the Hamiltonian all the way until you come to what we call the locked state, um, uh, which is the one where the beta un uh, under uh, uh, collapses to, and then you, you get zero. Okay. Okay. Now, if you just look at this, you see we have already found now a short block of size nine. Okay. But there's 15 states. So where are the other states? Now, when you see you act once, you get a unique state. But if you act twice, suddenly you see that there's a linear combination with a very specific, it's a very specific with weight. So one, one times this state plus one times this state. So in that sense, we clearly at this level, you have a two dimensional vector space and only we get one state. So then there's another one here hiding in this two dimensional vector space. So basically you make an ansatz, you take, you, ta you, 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 you take uh, these two states and write alpha here and beta here make a combinatorial ansatz. It's not a beta ansatz, it's a combinatorial ansatz. Um, so, um, or linear algebra ansatz. So, so, so you make this ansatz, you, you start acting, and then you see you can act five times until for the first time you can find alpha and beta such that you can get the zero state. And that means then, so then it shortens, and that means you have found the shortened block of, of length five. Now nine plus five is 14. We have 15 states, still one, state, one uh, state is missing. But you see what happens here. Here we have a one dimensional space, up here a one dimensional space. Here we have a two dimensional, a two dimensional. Suddenly we have a three dimensional space. So there's yet another state hiding in this three dimensional vector space. So you can make an un another ansatz with those three vectors with general alpha, beta, gamma, or alpha prime, beta, gamma, uh, beta prime, gamma prime with these three states. And then you can see um, that you can actually here immediately you can fine tune these alpha bet, bet, beta alpha prime beta prime gamma prime uh, to to get a Jordan block of of length one, and then we are done. So the decomposition is nine five 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 five, and and that, that is looks like something special here, but uh, it's not. And and uh, you can now see that that this procedure works in full generality, and if you if you see a or look at what we've actually done, you can see that we only looked at, in the end, the dimensionalities of these vector spaces. So you, 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 have, you are getting a combinatorial problem where you, you start from certain uh, anti-locked states and you have to see what is the multiplicity or the, si the dimensionality actually of the vector spaces generated. Um, <clears throat> so, and that leads to some very interesting combinatorial problem it's called Q combinatorics. Um, so we can encode the structure in a partition function. So the anti locked state stands for one. Then acting once with the Hamiltonian, uh, uh, you get again a one dimensional vector space we, we call Q. 
and and now um, we, we act twice you get two states so basically the numbers in front here give you the dimensionalities of the vector spaces one one dimensional one dimensional two dimensional two dimensional three dimensional two dimensional two dimensional one dimensional one dimensional yeah that's what I that's what we've seen here one dimensional one dimensional two two three two two one 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 so that's uh, that's uh, the structure here and this problem is solved uh, for general general l and m uh, by the so-called Q, Q binomial coefficient or Gaussian binomial coefficient. So this is a deformation of the ordinary binomial number uh, uh, with this kind of definition. And if you turn Q to one, then it just counts the 15 states. Uh, you get the Z equals 15. And, and then it's just the ordinary L minus one over M minus one binomial coefficient. But here it's Q deformed. Yeah? And one can show that this is indeed, this leads always to polynomials. Um, and uh, these coefficients actually have, an in, have a, a number of interesting combinatorial interpretations, and in particular, the, the one we need here, namely, is a certain number of partitions of the integer k subject to uh, uh, for certain further restrictions. Okay, now, uh, this was, um, you can, uh, so for example, another case, mx2, this was uh, this uh, trivial case, uh, one particle two, one particle three, so a single block of size six then is just encoded in this way, one plus Q plus Q squared plus Q cubed, Q4, Q5, a single block of size six. But if you go back at all these tables I showed you, the neat thing is now to each of these decompositions here, with these funny numbers, you just have uh, this kind of, uh, they are all Q binomials. That's a big encoded uh, in this uh, Q binomials. That's the amazing thing. Um, and so, for example, uh, L equals nine, uh, M equals five, K equals one has a structure. You see it's symmetric. Uh, uh, I mean, then this is one dimensional, this is one dimensional, then one here, one here, then it starts being two, two, and so on. So it's basically this kind of pyramid structure. And uh, um, basically, in codes, you can immediately extract the, the Trudon block uh, spectrum here. So the total number of terms here is 17 so that's one block of 17 then if you chop off the one and the q here and the q16 and q15 because there's a two-dimensional space here you get the next block which is size four shorter 13 and so on yeah okay now this was only um yeah and then we thought okay this looks so much like a partition function what is this and what we noticed and you'll you'll uh, i don't give you the details now but this, we are writing this up currently you can actually uh, express all this in, in a certain partition function. They take a trace over the, the, the state space of the spin chain, this Q to a certain interesting counting operator S hat, uh, which basically uh, uh, encodes all this uh, combinatorics. And the, the, the very nice thing uh, here is that this, if you find a suitable S hat, it also generalizes to the arbitrary values of K where the, uh, it's very complicated sums of products of uh, uh, Q, Q binomial coefficients in a complicated way. Okay, anyway, so that's basically what I wanted to tell you here today is that you, you suddenly find this partition function uh, um, and that basically solves the problem. Uh, we are still uh, missing some of the proofs of, of, uh, for the validity of the structure. Uh, but uh, we are convinced it's correct. Uh, and I want to say that this is only the solution of this hyper eclectic model, a single particle moving. Remember, uh, um, only basically no parameters anymore. We had this more complicated case, the eclectic. And I mentioned already that the hyper eclectic is more complicated than the eclectic in some sense. Uh, this is, is what we call universality. Uh, the spectrum of the hyper eclectic actually matches set of the eclectic provided uh, the certain filling conditions, which uh, condensed beta people or beta under people will know, basically it just means that you need to have uh, the, the most free, the most numerous particle needs to be particle one. The second most numerous needs to be particle two and then the particle three. And otherwise you have to just relabel the particles, okay? So in that sense, uh, but this universality proof is separate from, from the exact solution of the hyperactive model, which we have actually more or less constructed. This universality hypothesis is much more complicated to prove. And, and there we, we, we have lots of evidence, but we, we don't have a proof yet for this. 
Okay, I'm concluding. Um, so, inspired by the strongly twisted ending of four, we considered novel classes of non diagonalizable spin chains, the eclectic and hyper eclectic models. We proved their quantum integrability by deriving their R matrices. We show that the beta ansatz equations make sense and can even be partially solved explicitly, exhibiting rather non trivial scaling behavior. However, very annoyingly, they appear to be utterly useless for determining the spectrum of uh, trodden blocks. Now, with a combination of linear algebra and combinatorial methods, uh, we could determine the trodden normal form uh, uh, for the hyper eclectic model in all cases. Uh, and the solution, interestingly, is important in a suitable partition function. Uh, and you, uh, so all these uh, complicated tables are reproduced by this. The, the, the strange thing is that uh, integrability is not used, even though we strongly suspect uh, that it's still you know, hiding in the back because uh, why does this uh, intricate combinatorics work? Uh, the, the reason must be integrability, or so we think, but we, this part we, we, we couldn't establish yet. Okay, what is to do? We should complete the exact solution. We are almost done, but not completely, uh, of the hyper eclectic model. Um, we should prove this universality hypothesis for the eclectic. And most importantly, we should understand how to use the integrability to understand our findings and, and, and derive them. Now, uh, of course, then at some point we, we should really go back to, to, to field theory and apply all this to non unitary logarithmic quantum field theories in four dimensions. And finally, uh, so uh, actually, this kind of fishnet models and uh, also the, the more general uh, double scale, or actually, as I showed you, quadruple scale, scale models, uh, um, in, 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 in some cases, uh, non perturbative solutions. Via the quantum spectral curve where were proposed. But uh, basically, uh, it's clear that this uh, ignores this chain F structure. So, so, so yeah, this is something I, I don't know what to do with. Uh, and we've been discussing this with Kolya Gromov and so on. Uh, he somehow thinks that these states, in some sense, decouple. But uh, I, well, then again, I, I know that they don't because you get logarithmic uh, correlators. So I feel that this quantum spectral curve uh, results. Uh, some are only described like the diagonalizable sector of this model. And finally, one, one very interesting thing is uh, in this strong twisting limit, uh, you, 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 you don't get as a dual the, the lunin maldasina background, but you get what's called a dual fish chain. This is something discovered by Kolya Gromov and Amit Sever. And uh, um, yeah, also in this fish chain, basically, this. Uh, 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 non diagonalizability is sort of ignored. So uh, one wonders whether this is a complete, com complete, whether this tool is com complete or whether also something is missing there. Anyway, that's the end of my talk. So let's thank Matthias for a, a lucid and a very interesting talk. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions? I, I see Anne has a question. So, Anne, please go ahead. I'm sorry, that was just a clapping. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you showed the I metric. So based on that, you may try to do a little bit more than you make that answer. Yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, so basically, you uh, um, you um, you know when the, in, in the usual in the usual uh, algebraic data and that's you 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 make this and that's with acting with the p operators on on some reference state, and then you you act with the um, uh, basically the transfer matrix, which is like you write the at, uh, R, are you right? The monotomy is A, B, C, D, right, or something like this uh, in the two -term, two state case, uh, and and then you you act with A and D operators, and you are allowed to commute it through. And here in this uh, in this model, actually, the commute some of the commutations relations are missing, and you simply cannot move through. Yeah, but the other thing is also more in some sense more maybe more serious is that also you can show 
that acting as p operators, you are not exploring the space. You are not exploring the state space anymore. You have certain states which you need, uh, you just don't even get. Any further questions? Okay, if not, uh, let's thank Matthias again.